Can everyone hear me? Hello. Good evening. Can anyone hear me? Am I coming out all right? Is it all good? Where are we? Let's get the comments going. Hello. How are we? We all good? Yep. Can everyone hear me? Is there anyone there? Hello? Fantastic. Hello, Owen. How's it going? Um, so, hi, I'm James from Fujifilm. I'm coming from uh, the House of Photography. i um, just like to say thank you to Owen and the team at Campion's Cameras for inviting me along. Um, I wanted to come in and have a chat with uh, you all about the XS10 uh, that we recently launched, which is just here. Here is the XS10. Um, run you through a few of the features. Um, if any of you have any questions, just chip in straight away. Um, I'll get, them, get to them as they come in. Uh, I've run a fairly informal kind of uh, kind of talk, so uh, no dramas if you just jump in, we'll sort it all out. Um, so obviously the XS10 we announced very recently, um, kind of sits between the XT4 and the XT30 in the range. Um, it is a smaller and lighter um, body than the XT4. To give you an idea, uh, the weights are slightly different. The XS10 is about 460 odd grams versus the X-T4, which is about uh, 600 grams. If I hold them next to each other, these are both with an 18 to 55. So you can see the difference in the size there. There's an X-T4 in silver versus the XS10. Um, but we wanted to kind of go for um, a, a smaller image stabilized version of the X-T4. Um, so it has still got a magnesium alloy body, same as an X-T4, but it's not weather sealed. Um, but we changed the way that the camera uh, feels. We basically put a deeper hand grip on it. If you have a look, um, this has got quite a nice deep hand grip just there, which is a little bit more to hold on to, especially when using a longer lens. Uh, so that's that's really comfy in the hand. I like it. It's nice and easy and ergonomic to hold on to. Um, we've still got the battery compartment in the bottom uh, with a memory card slot as well. That's a UHS-1 card slot, so 100 meg per second is a maximum kind of speed. Um, but the thing we also changed on it, which was a, uh, a kind of a departure for us, but a, a new thing, was we've got the mode dial. You can see it just there. There it is. Uh, the mode dial has MASP on it. It's more of a traditional mode dial, as SLR users would uh, expect uh, to see. Now, we put that on as a slight change to what we usually do, uh, because we wanted customers who are perhaps not as familiar with traditional dials uh, to be able to uh, use it easily without any stress. A lot of people that have come in from, from uh, digital SLRs or even uh, film cameras from the 90s are used to MASP. They're, they're used to that. So you can chop and change that through there as you want to instead of the shutter speed dial um, that you would have on the rest of the range. Uh, that's not necessarily what we're going to do the whole way through, but it, it kind of caters to everyone. Um, now, you'll notice as well on the dial here, we have custom functions, one, two, three, and four. Um, these are, again, a departure from what we've done previously. We now have them set so they are actual full custom settings. So whatever you set them to uh, in still, so you can set it to manual focus or autofocus or face detect or anything like that, that is what comes across uh, in, in the custom settings. So you could save it. So for example, you could have custom one set for portraiture. So you have it for face detect with left eye priority. Or you could have a uh, custom two set for sports with uh, autofocus custom setting three. You can change it as you want to, and it will remember the custom setting that you've got before. So it makes it very fast to use uh, for, for different types of photography straight off. Um, now, we've still got the front and rear command dial. They can be changed, uh, or they, they will be functional during uh, the different modes that you select. But we've also got the FN dial at the top here. Now, the FN dial, uh, for me, because obviously being a feature film user myself, I tend to have it set to ISO because that's what it is on the rest of the cameras. Uh, so you can change that as you want to. But some people might want to have it for, I don't know, white balance or film simulations or anything like that, depending on what you want to do with it. You can go through. Now, we've got the Q button and ISO button just on here. Normally, we have the Q button just on the back here, um, but obviously, with a lot of feedback, we'll um, push it there, so we changed it to up the top here. Um, but these are, again, all function buttons. 
They can be changed depending on what you want to do with them. Uh, so you can change them to, I think I've got my ISO, because I've got my ISO set over here, I've set this ISO button to the film simulation button because I shoot a lot in black and white. So you can chop and change it as you want to. That's uh, as nice and simple to do. We use turn the camera on and then with display back, hold it for four seconds and it will go through. And then you can go down using the joystick to change to pretty much whatever you like, really. You can change it as you want to. Uh, we've also got as well all the usual buttons that you're used to. So the drive button's over here. You've got playback. Uh, the view mode button is just here. Now the view mode button, whereas before it has been a dedicated uh, viewfinder button, which would change the viewfinder mode, you can now set that as a function as well. Same with the AF on and the AEL uh, lock as well. Plus you've also got touch screen uh, if you want to use it and you can assign those to functions as well depending on what you want to do. Now the touch screen uh, and the, the screen flips out like an X-T4, so it's fully articulated. So if you're recording yourself, you can see what's going on. Equally, if you're doing something at a weird angle, for example, you're shooting some macro, you can go over the top. Uh, yeah, whatever really kind of takes your fancy. There's, there's no, uh, no limitation on how you want to use it. I also like it for a bit of architecture as well. If I want to shoot over the top of something, uh, do some roofs, I can shoot over like that. That's nice and easy for me to use. So depending on how you want to use it uh, is up to you. Uh, the viewfinder is a 0.62 times viewfinder, so it's nice and large and very bright. Uh, the maximum refresh rate on it is 100 frames per second, uh, so it refreshes nice and quickly. Uh, and like the rest of the range, or the X-T4, sorry, you can change it to resolution priority or frame rate priority, depending on how you want to use it. Because obviously if you're doing a static subject or doing a landscape, you might want to go resolution priority to get the most detail out of it as humanly possible when you're looking through. You've also got the traditional uh, dial, or joystick as I call it, the nubbin. Uh, for changing your focus points and navigating through the menus if you want to. Uh, and you can also touch focus for the different uh, focus points if you want to do that as well. Uh, the flash, we've worked on it a little bit with the programming, so it still pops up uh, nice and small, but it's an intelligent flash now, so it gives you less of a kind of a deer in a headlight kind of look. It looks a little bit more natural, which is always nice. Uh, nothing worse than flash photography where foreground or people are, are nice and uh, well exposed, but everything else looks really dark, looks like they've been shot in a cave. Um, but we, uh, so we've got in here, uh, as with the X-T4, it's the X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor, which is a backlit sensor with copper wiring. Uh, so it's very fast to throw the data around um, from behind, or from the image on the sensor to the camera, so it'll focus quickly. And being a backlit sensor as well, all of the light, uh, or well, the majority of the light can go from the pixel face uh, to the sensor itself. You're not having to worry about wiring over the top. So it's very good in low light as well. Uh, and as with the uh, X-T4, X-T3, X-Pro3, X-100V, uh, it's got the X processor 4 as well. So the very fast focusing is still there. Uh, all the film simulations are still there. The HD and 4K video is all there. So it's, it's a nice and fast camera to use. Uh, now with the new 50mm f1, uh, which I've got just here, um, the camera will focus down to minus 7 EV. Uh, so very, very good in low light conditions. Uh, focusing as well, and it tracks nice and quickly too. Uh, the focus, when it is um, locking on, it focuses down at 0 0.02 of a second. Uh, so it's very quick. Um, you've got 100% phase detect coverage across the sensor. Uh, if you're using the electronic shutter, it'll do 30 frames per second and continuous shooting, it's blackout free. Uh, in the drive mode or mechanical, do eight frames per second uh, in shooting. And also the face detection is running left or right eye priority if you want to use it, or just auto eye priority. Depending on how you want to use it, uh, it it'll work pretty much whichever way you want to go. Um, we have got, as you would expect, uh, you can control it via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth using the, uh, the app, Feature from Camera Remote app. Uh, that can be used for either uh, triggering the camera, or you can use it for transferring the files, whichever you prefer. That's free, and that works on iOS and Android. Uh, so you can use that. You can use that on tablets as well as phones, depending on how you want to use it. Uh, alternatively, um, when Facebook is behaving itself, you can use the Webcam uh, 2 software. So it'll work across with that as well. So you can use that for um, presenting uh, Zoom calls or whatever. You can use the camera plugged in on that, uh, and away you go. Now, this is like the X-T4. It has got in-body stabilization on it. A slight difference from the X-T4 it is uh, six stops rather than six and a half stops, um, but it's smaller and lighter as a result. Uh, the majority of lenses will be, will be six stops uh, all the way through. 
Um, now, to give you an idea, the, the actual size and weight of the uh, module, if you look at an XT4, is 73 grams. The XS10 is 55 grams. The XH1 uh, is 92 grams. Uh, all of them are five axis, so it's, it's a lot smaller than the, than the XT4 uh, stabilization unit. And six stops rather than six and a half stops. So they've done very well to make it smaller and lighter as well, which of course contributes to the camera being lighter and smaller overall too. Uh, we have got as well. So obviously with image stabilization, when you're using it for video, because uh, video is, is a key part where image stabilization is, is used, uh, you have got USB-C on the side of the camera. We have a look in here. USB, can you see that? There we go. USB-C just at the top there. Mini HDMI and just under here as well is uh, your three and a half mil microphone jack. Now, if you want to record, if you want to monitor the sound with headphones, you can do it through the USB-C with a three and a half mil um, adapter. So USB-C to three and a half mil jack, uh, and that will allow you to use your headphones across. That's no problems at all. Uh, USB-C port can also be used for charging as well as data transfer uh, and the headphones, but one at a time, you can't do the whole lot together. Uh, the recording button on the top here, dedicated recording button if you want to use that, but you can also change it for an FN button if you don't want to use it for video or you prefer to have your video button somewhere else. That is another function button that you can set to whatever you like. Uh, movie mode, the, the function button will record in any of the stills, but if you want to do dedicated movie, you have got your movie mode just there. Uh, now, as for the X-T4 and the X-T3, there is a separate menu of controls for video. Uh, so they will just, um, you can set all of your quality uh, and aspect ratios and film simulations if you're doing that, and focusing modes. You can do those all separately on a separate bank so you can um, choose what you want for stills and what you want for video, depending on, on what you want to do uh, straight through. Now, the video mode uh, you've got in 1080p, you can do 240 frames per second, or if you're recording an F-Log, uh, it's down to 30 frames per second in 4K. But you've also got on here, when you are recording an F-Log, you've got F-Log View Assist. So you can see roughly what the uh, image is going to look like, or the video is going to look like uh, afterwards once you've graded it. You can see that in the camera as you go. Uh, the in-body stabilization will be the digital image stabilization as well. Uh, so it, it, you can use it handheld if you want to. You don't necessarily have to use a full rig, obviously depending on what you're shooting. Now, the frame rates between the two. The XS10 will give you 29.97 frames per second in 4K maximum. That's compared to the 60 frames or 59.94 in the X-T4. Uh, it'll do long GOP. Uh, the bit rate internally is 4208 bit. Uh, externally, if you record out, it's 42210 bit. Uh, it'll do MOV and MP4s. Uh, high speed recording, as I said, is at 240 frames per second on 1080. Uh, the maximum recording time is 30 minutes or 29 minutes, 59 seconds, as you would expect. Uh, at 30 frames per second. Uh, you've got controls can be changed through the touchscreen if you want to, so you don't have to do the clicks of the buttons. So if you're recording on the camera with the microphone rather than a separate sound, um, running a separate file, you can do that. You can, you can change everything on the touchscreen, so it's nice and quiet to use as well. Um, you've got the option, as I mentioned, with digital image stabilization to also do IS boost mode. Uh, so that'll be a lot better if you're, if you're hand holding it, it's a little bit shaky. Um, and you, as I said, you've got a designated movie menu too. Now, recording times, give or take, uh, you've got about 30 minutes in uh, 4K, right up to 30 frames per second. In full HD, you've got about 20 minutes at uh, 60 frames per second, if you want to. Uh, if you're going full HD high speed, uh, at 120 frames per second, you've got about six minutes of recording at 240 frames per second, about three minutes. Now, this is because we put a separate plate in the camera which works as a heat sink, which dissipates heat more effectively. Because uh, obviously on a small camera, um, getting uh, when you are running the camera hard and it's recording, heat buildup is a thing. So we put a new plate in there which will dissipate heat more effectively, which allows us to run it a little bit harder and a little bit faster. Uh, a little thing as well for videographers, uh, the count clock will show, um, will count up uh, when you're recording. Uh, in minutes and hours, uh, whereas you can also, it'll show you when you're recording the amount of time you've got left as well. Now, depending on which lens you want to use, at the moment we've got 35 lenses, but there are a few more on the way. Uh, this is with the 1855 2.8-4 OIS, uh, which is a cracking little all-round lens. I absolutely love it. Uh, really, really sharp, nice and fast to focus as well with the linear motor. 
and the image stabilization on it when it's twinned with the XS10. The, the stabilization on the lens will work with the body as well and, and give you a really nice uh, combination of both for nice, nice steady shots. I mentioned before the 50mm f1. There it is. It is awesome. I've had this for, how long have I had this for? Three weeks, four weeks, give or take. Um, I absolutely love it. It's great. Uh, very fast to focus, uh, especially considering its size. As a 50mm f1, normally you'd expect that kind of lens to be quite slow to focus because there's a lot of elements to move around. Uh, but no, it's fast to focus, um, very sharp wide open, has a wonderful smooth bocker as well on it. Uh, yeah, I love it. It's a great lens. I really, really enjoy it. Um, Price-wise, it's not too silly either. It's £1,500, £1,499, which, considering what it is, is extremely reasonable and, and pretty low price, to be fair. Uh, but that works nicely on the camera. Now, as I was mentioning, with the grip, um, because this is a slightly larger lens than you would uh, normally think about using straight off the bat, that extra grip there gives me a little bit more to hold on to, so I can hold that weight nicely. Uh, so the camera feels nice and balanced. Uh, so also as well when I'm using it for like a, uh, for sports work with perhaps like a 5140 or 100 or if I'm feeling fancy, I'll take out my 200mm f2. Uh, so it, it's a nice grip for that. And of course, all the focusing mechanisms that are on the X-T4 and all the menus are in this as well. So it's very fast to focus. Now, we also, uh, the same day we announced the XS10, we also announced this, which is the 1024 F4 WR. Uh, so we changed it a little bit. Uh, has anyone got a 1024 in the comments? Anyone got one? Let's see if everyone frantically types or goes no. Anyone there? So the 1024 is um, same optical formula as the previous design, um, but it is now weather resistant. And also we changed the aperture ring. So on the previous generation, or the, the, the current one as it were, the aperture ring wasn't directly linked. Uh, it could freely spin even though it was a constant aperture length. Uh, so you could just wind it all the way open to go to F4 and just keep on going. I personally like the hard stops, so I go, no, I'm wide open there. I'm in automatic or I'm back one there. And I know I'm stopped all the way down to F22. Um, so we've changed that on it as well. So if you are thinking of going out there and using the camera uh, in slightly more steer conditions, uh, then this is a lovely way to go. If you're thinking of pairing it with the XS10, go for the standard one or wait until these are out in mainstream and get the weather resistant one as well. We also improved the image stabilization on this uh, a little bit. So this is now one stop better, um, just the lens on its own. So if you're using it with a camera that hasn't got image stabilization in it, uh, it's now three and a half stops instead of two and a half stops. So that's a nice thing to be using as well, especially if you're doing kind of um, low light photography, first dance perhaps, or landscapes, dawn or dusk and you're not carrying a tripod, and you just want to shoot around, uh, you can do this with this. Uh, we also announced uh, on the same day we uh, announced a change to the roadmap uh, for lenses. So we are going to do a 70 to 300 uh, F4 to 5.6 OIS, uh, which will work with teleconverters. Uh, I can't wait for it, really. It's going to be a fantastic lens. It's going to fill a nice gap between the 55 200 and the 100 400. Uh, so hopefully, I haven't seen the size of it yet, I haven't, I haven't seen one in my hands, I don't know any specifics on it yet, unfortunately, otherwise I would tell you. But it looks like it's going to be an absolute cracker, um, just to carry day to day. But I don't want to necessarily carry the pur my purposeful 100-400, if I'm just out and might see something, um, then a 70-300 with a teleconverter would be absolutely peachy. It would be a nice way of working. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one of those. Um, and we also uh, got, uh, we also put an 18mm f1.4 on the road map as well. So an 18.14 is going to give you about 27mm uh, 1.4, which would be lovely for just running around. And the 70 to 300 is going to give you 105 to 450mm effective. And then with the teleconverter, obviously, if you put it two times on the back of that, that's 210 to 900mm, if my maths is right. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, so it's going to give you a lot of length in a, in a smaller size uh, and package than the 104 could. So on the XS10, uh, as you would expect, it still has got film simulations, um, all of them that you know and love. I personally tend to shoot Acros uh, the majority of the time. Acros with the red overlay gives you really punchy contrast, especially if you're shooting a blue sky. Though obviously at this time of year with the grey clouds and nighttime, not so much. But when the light is good or when the weather is good, then Acros with a blue uh, with a red uh, filter over the top of it will give you really punchy blue skies. Uh, but there are 18 film simulations on it, 
um, uh, as you would expect. Now, on the um, on the auto modes, whilst we're talking about color and bits and bobs, uh, in auto and scene priority, uh, we've now got uh, the color chrome blue effect, which will basically look at the image uh, that you're taking. So if you are taking a landscape in color, um, so for example, a beach with a blue sky, uh, what it will do is it will keep the beach and the rest of the scenery the normal colors, but it will give the blue a real punch to it and make the clouds look a little bit punchier as well. Uh, so that's specific color chrome blue effect. And um, you also got clarity control in there. The color chrome effect overall um, still comes in from the from the rest of the range, so from the X-T4, X-Pro3, X-100V. Color chrome effect will um, make uh, colors, for example, red. Uh, it will make the image uh, punchier, um, give it more definition, more clarity. Red can be quite a hard uh, color for some cameras to see or for sensors to see. But uh, with color chrome effect, it can look at it. Um, so if you're taking a picture of a flower, for example, you can look at the image, see the curvature of the petals, see all the different subtle tones, and give it a little bit more oomph, for want of a better word. You've also got dynamic range priority uh, in the auto and scene priority modes. Dynamic range priority, what that will do is it will look at a scene that you're shooting, um, work out if there's a lot of dynamic range in the scene. So perhaps it's a backlit scene, or a kind of dawn or dusk scene with some street lights going on, and the camera will adjust itself so it will uh, give you slightly more dynamic range than you're expecting to get anyway. Uh, so it makes the scene um, a lot nicer. It makes it, it brings it closer to what we see as humans, because obviously our eyes have more dynamic range than cameras do. Uh, you've also got as well, um, obviously shoots RAW and JPEG, that's a given. Um, the auto modes, uh, if you're doing photography portraits, for example, um, face detect uh, will pick up the face and will meter correctly off the face as well. So you can use that uh, as you want to for out and about. And that will pair with um, a dynamic range priority or anything else like that when you want to. If you're doing a backlit scene, it'll pick up the face, pick up the eyes, meter off that and make the scene look pleasant. Now, when you've captured your image, if you are going to edit the image, uh, you can obviously use Lightroom, Capture One, whichever you prefer. Um, but you can download uh, with Capture One, you can use Capture One Express. So that's a raw converter. If you want to use that, you can do. Uh, and that's free, of course. Um, Lightroom, I'm sure, does a, a free version as well. Or Silky Pix on our website. Uh, or you can use the camera itself with um, uh, X Acquire. I'm trying to think of it for a second. Fujifilm X Acquire, and you can use that to convert the raws in the camera itself uh, into JPEGs using the film simulations on camera. So it uses the camera itself to process the rules into JPEGs. Um, or alternatively, you can uh, process them in camera as well. So if you shoot a RAW, um, you can go into it and perhaps you want to see it, look in, um, see what it looks like in color or black and white or even um, three different film simulations. You can film simulation bracket or you can edit it on camera if you want to as well. Obviously, you can't change all the levels and bits and bobs, but you can change the scene as a whole, change your exposure that you recorded at, um, change your ISO that you recorded at, um, you, or, or change the white balance, sorry, um, change film simulation and tweak it as you would like to. Now, the XS10, why we called it the XS10, obviously S is for small, so made it nice and small, but the idea of it is that it's a small, uh, smaller kind of XT4, maybe it's a backup to an XT4, Maybe it's a backup to an X-T3 or something like that where you perhaps want image stabilization, you don't want to replace your X-T3 or you just want a second camera. Maybe you dip the toe in the water to the range um, and you want to have a, a, a smaller, lighter camera that still packs a really powerful punch. Uh, and that's that's kind of where we're at with it. It is a, it's a nice way of working. I enjoy it. I especially like the grip. Uh, so, yeah, a nice, nice thing to use. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the overview of the camera, really. Um, have we got any questions so far? Oh, and are you still there? Are we good? Feels like Eurovision. Has anyone got any questions? Hmm. 
No, okay. Well, um, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, because obviously I've been talking about the camera with you, um, and uh, if you want to come and try your, uh, come and get your hands on it, obviously the stores are closed, but I know Owen's got some excess tents coming in tomorrow. Uh, so that, that's, if you wanted to get one, you can do immediately, uh, Campkins. Alternatively, if you wanted to try before you buy, um, we offer a 48 hour loan service, which is free of charge. Uh, all you need to do for that is to register on our website, Fujifilm Connect. Uh, that's Fujifilm Connect. Uh, log in, create an account, and follow the links through to the 48 hour loan period. And said so that's free of charge. Uh, so you can get the camera, give it a try, see what you think. Uh, and if, like me, you really like it, then you can go and have a chat with Owen and get one. And you can use that for, uh, I think it's a few items. You don't necessarily have to have the XS10 uh, on its own and, and not worry about lenses. You can rent a lens as well if you want to, or a couple of lenses, uh, and get out there and have a play with it. Or anything else. So if you're a Fujifilm user and you're thinking, you know, do I want an X-T4? What about a Pro 3? What about the X100B? Is there anything else you want to try? You can do that through the Fujifilm Connect system as well. So it doesn't just have to be the XS10. I realize I'm talking about that. Um, but it could be it could be something else as well if you wanted to. So how are we all doing? Everyone good? Aha, if I scroll down I can read the comments, that's a good one. Uh, so where are we? Comments. Uh, Owen, yes I can see your questions now. If I scroll down, the ones of modern technology. Cameras on your man, computers not so much. Um, Chrissy, food for thought, I was thinking to get the 100, 400 now. Yeah, it's a nice way of working, but as I said, what you can do, um, obviously have a chat with Owen and, and get one in, but what you can do uh, is you could try it through Fujifilm Connect and uh, yeah, give it a try, see what you think, take it out and use it in the real world. Um, scroll up and through, Owen's linking everything, that's all good. Privilege to have you all, thanks Owen, you're so kind. Um, yeah, where are we? So it's all good. It's all good. Um, what else could I talk to you about? A whole load of stuff, really. Um, the X-T3. Has anyone got an X-T3? Anyone using an X-T3? Because uh, the X-T3 has just had a firmware update. Uh, so now it will focus down as fast as a, an X-T4. So it brings it to um, minus 7 EV as well. Uh, so it focuses very, very fast. So if you have got an X-T3, um, you can um, download the uh, download the firmware. Uh, if you're looking at doing portraiture, low light portraiture, for example, you can run the 50 mil on that uh, as well, and that will bring you down to or that will focus down in minus 70 B, so it's nice and fast in low light. You just see that um, we have got a share for the cashback as well. Yep, uh, there is cashback currently on lenses. There's up to 250 pounds depending on which lens you go for. Uh, which is worth having a look at as well currently. So if you are thinking about getting it, especially you, Chrissy, with 100-400, have a look at the deals. Have a look and see what's available. Uh, no time like the present. Uh, and you've still got time, obviously, if you want to do the loan, uh, have a try with it, and then come back in and get it before the cashback runs out. You can do that as well. That's no stress at all. Just have a look through the comments. Uh, when will the new lenses be available? Pass. I don't know is the honest answer, apologies. Hopefully not too much later. The 50 mil I think is, if it's not out now, it will be imminently, but I think you should be able to get it now. The 1024 uh, will be shortly. I haven't got mine yet, but I'm hoping to get it soon. So as soon as I've got it, it should be out in the real world shortly after that. Uh, what else have we got? See, Owen's been sharing a lot of stuff in the chat, which is always good, links through. through. Now a little thing that is, is quite useful, especially on the XS10, and forgive me for not using it on this, uh, Facebook is deciding not to play ball, is obviously as this has the flip out screen, the articulated screen, what you can do is use our app, our um, Webcam 2 app, um, and you can use the XS10, uh, in fact you can use most of the cameras to be fair, even the GFX if you get uh, kind of exotic with it. Um, you can use the XS10 as um, webcam, or you can use the XT4 sorry, as a webcam. Uh, so normally, this has been uh, recorded on my MacBook because the cameras uh, or the, the program decided not to play ball with Facebook because um, bless Facebook. But uh, you can do it so you get a high quality stream. Obviously, at the moment, you're off my MacBook, which is okay for quality, but I'm looking at my XT4 just behind me, which is far nicer to look at. 
Um, I could have used uh, XT3 as well or, or bits and bobs. But the flip out screen on the XS10 is a nice way of being able to see what you're recording as you record. So you can make sure you're in the frame. Uh, see where the focus is going as well. I've got my X24, in fact, uh, my X24 is just behind me. I can see that it's tracking my eyes. I move around and picking up my face with no problems at all. Owen, have you got any questions? Are you happy? Anything you think I've missed? No, we're looking good. Cool. Has anyone got any questions on the XS10 or on Fujifilm as a whole whilst I'm here? Any questions at all? Doesn't have to be on the XS10. Can be Fujifilm generally. Any questions? Any queries? How to use the camera? Things they missed? All good. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. What I'm aiming to do as well, uh, just while I'm letting you type questions, if anyone's got any questions. Um, obviously, with the current situation, I can't get into the store and see you all, which is a shame because I, I want to. Um, my role as field training specialist is I, I go into the stores and um, uh, I go into the stores and uh, show people cameras, uh, show the staff cameras, train uh, train them, answer your questions as well. Uh, so I I go into the stores and do it. But obviously, I can't at the moment. Um, at the moment, you'll see where I am. I'm currently in the House of Photography in London, um, which you can also pop into to try the cameras before coming up to Campkins and, uh, and buying it there. But obviously, we're closed as well currently at the moment. I've got the place to myself, which is quite nice, hence why it's so quiet and echoey. It's just me. But as soon as all this is over, as soon as we can get back out on the road, I'm going to come up and uh, see Owen and the gang, uh, bring the cameras up, um, and as soon as I can do that, I will let him know so he can promote it. So anyone that does want to come up and, and try it or try any of the cameras, if there's anything specifically you want to try, let Owen know, he can let me know. Uh, and I can bring it up and we'll have a go. Equally, as I said, with the, with the 48 hour free trial, you can do that as well. Um, but if you want to try a whole load of stuff or ask me any questions as well, as soon as I can come up, I will. Uh, and we can, we can all see each other face to face, which would be nice. A nice change rather than this video stuff, uh, which is all good, but uh, slightly different. You can't get your hands on. You can't get your hands on. Indeed. Cool. So yeah, also just seeing if there are any other questions. I've got 50 mil just there. Um, Weight-wise, uh, if anyone is has got the kind of 1655, uh, it's about comparable to that. Not too big. Um, if we look at the 1024 as comparison, uh, there's not a lot in it. Um, it's a little bit more heft, obviously, um, but it's 50 mil f1. It's a lot lighter than I was expecting. Um, everyone that I have shown this to has picked it up and gone, that's lighter than I was expecting, uh, which is a good thing. It's faster focus as well, really sharp image quality, uh, wide open. But nice and, and relatively small, uh, nice and compact as well. Just cracking lens, really. I'm, I normally use my 50mm f2 uh, for portraiture, but I'll be honest, I haven't used it as much now. I've got 50mm f1. Now, that is obviously a slightly different horses for courses if I want to go for a very small lightweight setup. Um, then the 50mm F2 will be the one. But if I'm kind of carrying the camera bag and I'm doing a set piece specifically for portraiture, then, um, then the 50mm F1 will be the one. Uh, Owen's asked, anything you can reveal Fujifilm future plans or products? Come on, you know me better than that. Um, as uh, Apart from the roadmap, uh, which we announced with the XS10, uh, with the 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6 image stabilized uh, lens and the 18 mm f1.4. Uh, no, pass. We're always developing stuff, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but no, nothing, nothing that I'm aware of immediately. Uh, so no, you know as much as I do uh, at the moment. So yeah, we are as we are. Cheeky question though to ask on a live stream online. It's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, we've had a busy year with the with the XS10. What did we launch earlier in the year? X100V. Yeah, XT4, of course, we launched earlier in the year because I was doing the road show just before lockdown. So, uh, yeah, we've had a busy week. I think we're all good for the moment. We're all good. A uh, busy week, busy year. I think we're all good for the moment. Indeed, Chrissy saying, I'll be there. Excellent. 
Um, yeah, so as soon as I'm in, as soon as I have plans, as soon as uh, I can come into the stores, as soon as we can get back out on the road, uh, yeah, I'll be straight up. I'll bring my bag of tricks and we'll all have a play with stuff as well. Indeed. Excellent. So what else we got the questions here just scrolling through? Everyone's good, everyone can hear me. Real square. Any questions about Fujifilm generally? Anything at all? Uh, lenses to use? Questions about how to use the camera, software, anything like that, video? Anything really? What would you like to know? As you got me. In fact, what I will do, whilst I'm waiting for you to type, is I will take you all through a little tour of the, uh, of the house of photography. So here we are. Uh, this is the house of photography. I don't know if anyone's uh, seen it, um, but if you haven't, we're going for a little walk around. So this is the upstairs area. This is the gallery. Uh, we have got uh, photos from our ex-photographers, our ambassadors at the moment. They're on the wall, uh, looking all good. Yeah, nice. Um, we have also got a little studio over there, uh, which we use for um, uh, photo shoots and bits and bobs. It's a bit of a mess because it's a working studio, but I'll show you quickly. Just There it is. It's a working studio in progress. Um, and I'll take you downstairs. We've got two levels. We've actually got three. We've got the studio downstairs as well. Um, so I'll bring you down. We have got the Instax area just around there. That's Long Acre. And then we have got the X series area, the capture area. Obviously, you can see we were doing a bit of filming earlier, that's why the lights are up. Uh, the lens wall, uh, with all sorts of stuff in there. And then we've got the lab as well. And then I'll take you downstairs into the Pro Lounge too. So we've got the Pro Lounge just here, which if you're a Fujifilm Pro service member, uh, you can get access to when you're in London. Um, now, to be Fujifilm Pro service, uh, you get, um, for Fujifilm Pro service, you get uh, faster returns on uh, repairs should you need them. Um, you also get as well access to the lounge here. You get a service once a year, I believe, on, on a couple of items of kit as well, uh, which can just be a, a clean and check, essentially. Uh, so you've got anything that needs cleaning, you can do that. You pop that in. Um, yeah, it's a nice little service to have, and it's free of charge as well. There's a limit on, on what you have to have to get into it. Um, but pretty much anyone's running kind of like an X-T3, X-T4, X-Pro3, um, any of the Pro lenses as well, you're, you're straight in. Uh, so this is the Pro Lounge. And we've also got the studio as well. So it's going to get echoey as I move in. Uh, here's the studio, the main studio. Obviously you can see that space as well. Um, now I had a question. Are we going to keep producing analog film? Yes. Uh, I believe we are. We announced and released recently, what did we announce and release? Across 2, black and white, which made me very happy because I'm a black and white kind of guy. Uh, so in fact, I will show you our film fridge as we have a film fridge here in the help. Um, we even sell 5, 4 and 10, 8. Um, but yes, we are still doing film, so you will see. Just a little bit of a smattering of it. Um, but yes, there is a fridge full of film. So yes, we are. Yes, we are obviously not quite as many lines as we did 20, 30 years ago, but uh, we thin the herd down to um, thin the herd down to all the popular ones that everyone uses. So yes, we are still doing film. Obviously, with our film simulations as well, that's a that's a heart back to our heritage because uh, you've got to remember where you came from. Indeed, I'll go back upstairs. And there we go. We have got a lift, which I should have used. It's been a long day. And here we go. So yeah, so that's kind of, that's Hop, that's Fujifilm. As I said, um, if you want to have a chat with Owen Kampkins um, about anything that you've seen here, uh, if he hasn't got it, he'll get it for you. Uh, the XS10s, getting in tomorrow, I think, if, you, if I remember rightly. Um, and there we go, there we go. And back where we started. I mean, are you happy?
I see Owen's link, the X100V. What colours have you got in stock, Owen? I hope silver, because that's the correct choice. Although there's always the debate, do I go silver or black? I personally went silver for mine. Um, I went black the previous generation, but I went silver this time because it's very retro. Um, but I love it, so it's all good. Marvellous. Well, um, thank you all for your time. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Um, Owen obviously has my email address. Uh, Owen, if you have any customers that come in and want to have a chat, uh, got any questions, or if you've got any questions, get in touch. I'm more than happy to answer any of those. Um, but otherwise, go into Campkins, have a chat with the guys. Um, they've got pretty much everything in stock, so you can have a play with what they've got there as well. And as soon as I'm up, as I said, I will let him know so he can pass it on so you can all have a try as well. Marvellous. All right, well, have a good evening all. Um, stay safe, and I will hopefully see you all soon. Brilliant. Have a good one. Cheers.